what I'd like to show you in this short tutorial is how to get past painter's block, how to get past that fear of a lovely brand new white canvas and to begin to put your heart and soul into your painting because that's what art is all about. It's, a, it's about the expression of yourself into the subject that you've been inspired by. Um, a bit of a, I call it a tree hugger, although I'm not going to hug the canvas. I begin by stroking my composition onto the canvas and what that does, it, it begins a relationship between myself and the canvas. It takes away that fear, because we've already met each other now, you see, we're, we're starting to build up the friendship. And one of the major benefits is that I can be sure to not make the mistake of my composition needing more space at the top, at the side, or at the bottom. And then stage number two is, as I say, the tree hugging bit, which is stroking the canvas. I've chosen a very simple image this morning of my little dog, Pixie. So if this is my composition, it's very simple, as I say, generally they're a lot more complex. I know that I want to do her face around there, so I'll just make sure that I know where her eyes are going to be, where her nose will be, and that I have enough space to then bring in the folds of the cushions. So I've broken the ice, I'm building up a relationship, I'm starting to put a bit of my heart and soul into my painting and I'm getting my composition correct. I'll then take a thin paintbrush, add a bit of medium to some yellow, and this paintbrush is pretty much going to be used as a pencil. It's as if I was sketching. There we go. That would be the middle. Now, I choose yellow, of course, because that's just one step up from white and blends in very, very easily into most colors. I've also diluted it fairly heavily with medium. So it's, it's not a heavy bit of paint here. It's quite diluted and easy to fit in. So basically, it's not even a perfect sketch. It's literally giving me an idea of where Pixie is going to end up on my canvas. Just put in her eyes. I'll be painting the background with brushes and Pixie herself with palette knives. Now, I have cheated because this is a very short tutorial. I have actually pre-painted this painting. Um, I wanted to just show you the the stroking method, the putting a bit of yourself onto your canvas before you even start, and the fact that you can do a very, very simple diagram, which looks nothing like what it's going to end up being in the very end, with the knowledge as well, that this is my inspiration. It's the image I've used to get me going onto my painting, but I know that I don't have to do that image exactly as it is on this painting. She's purely my inspiration. I'll get it as close as I want it to be, but I'm certainly not a slave to getting everything exactly as it ought to be or exactly as it is in the photograph because as I teach my students a, a good composition for a photograph is purely that it's a good composition for a photograph it's not necessarily a good composition for a painting and um, you really do need to use a bit of artist license very very often to make a painting come alive and to catch that energy that you want to catch. So many people say you have to be able to draw to paint. You should be continuing to improve your drawing skills and continue drawing as you learn to paint as well. But you don't have to be really good at drawing in order to paint. You need to just put down your outlines, just get your subject there, and then put yourself into your painting and that's all you need. There's, there's nothing about being a fantastic drawer. I'm going to just do a quick bit of the background, just to give you a bit of colour onto that. I'm just adding a fair amount of medium to my white paint so that it moves nicely over the canvas. This is my favourite shape of palette knife, by the way. Right now, though, I'm going to use a size 20 brush, hog hair brush. Let's clean that off a bit. And quickly, quickly cover the canvas in, in um, white paint. All I'm really doing here is putting down a layer on which I can pick up other colour. So the white is just going to be a neutral layer for me where I can begin to put in a background that's not going to 
be too strong because I want Pixie's face to be the strongest feature there. In fact, I haven't put out enough white paint to cover the whole canvas. So we'll just do the technique with as much of the space as I have been able to cover. There we go. A bit more. Around her little face. I have to watch it with Pixie because these are the cushions I sit on on my couch. And every time I sit down, I have to check it to see that she's not hiding in amongst the cushions and going to be sat on any minute. Now, for a normal background, the cushions are blue. I'm going to pick up red first, but perhaps just give you an idea. All I do now is put a, just a tip, actually, of paint onto the brush keep some parts dark and work other parts in. I've actually put too much on here. I don't usually put this much paint on. But let's just see what happens because it's creative painting and we want a, lo a lovely, energetic, live background. Even though the fabric is fairly smooth with its bits of folds and whatever not, in my painting, I like to capture the wind to see the energy. Just give a vague idea of where the cushion is going to be, and all its folds. Now, to me, that's boring with just one colour. We need to get um, a bit more life into it. So, we'll just add a bit of red there. Again, the strokes are erratic, rather catching the energy of life in the painting than trying to be too precise and perfect. Again, I've picked up a bit much red there. I can sort that out later though. Oil paints being oil paints, you can paint over, blend in, play nicely until you get the, the right consistency and colours that you want in. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do for this morning really. Just to give you an idea of the technique of putting this on, if this is a painting in my studio, I'd be working a lot more on it, spending a lot more time taking out a bit of that too much red that I've put in there. I'd probably leave that blue that I thought was too much to begin with. So I'd work another 10, 20 minutes, maybe even half an hour on the background before I then picked up my favourite palette knife and started to put in Pixie's face. Um, very simple, I would have just used white, a touch of the red. Uh, for the black, I would have made that out of a combination of the red and the blue and possibly a bit of the brown that I would have brought in later. I, I did bring burnt sienna and burnt umber with me, so I would have made the black. So it would have been very simple colours. And I think at this stage, I will show you my cheat painting. There we go. That was Pixie done before I got here, knowing that I would have only a little bit of time to complete the painting. I hope you enjoyed what you saw.